All right. Um, Jim, I got to ask you, given the nature of this movie and the franchise, what's the scariest video game you've ever played? And then I'll give you my answer and I'll give you time to laugh at me. Scariest video game I've ever played? Mm-hmm. Jeez, I don't play a lot of horror games. Um, I would probably go... Uh, I can give you a couple. Um <laughs> Well, I played this. I played both Resident Evil and Resident Evil Two. They're not like scary, scary, but they're like fun, scary. Mm-hmm. Um, scary. I would go for something like Doki Doki Literature Club, or uh, The Last of Us Part Two. Is not like a horror game, but it is like it's scary. It's got like some scary parts. It's got like not jump scares, but it does have like scenes that really has your heart going like pretty pretty loud. I played mm-hmm. the original uh, Alone in the Dark when I was a kid, and that kind of freaked me out. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some sections in Majora's Mask that left me like scarred when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> yeah, every time like he would put on a mask, like I would uh, as a kid, that would freak me the fuck out. Um, but like a real, real scary game. Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't dwell too much on the on the horror games. What What is your <laughs> What are you going to say? Don't judge me. Okay. The scariest moment I've ever had in a video game. Not, not, not necessarily scary from beginning to end, because I have played some scary games, right? Okay. Uh, but the scariest moment I've ever had that was the closest for me being like, I've never played a video game ever again, was Toy Story. The, the Toy Story 2, the one where you play as Buzz and you're looking for Woody? Yeah, no, but th- it's because there's a pop up in there that pop up that no one ever talks about, no one mentions, no one no. There's some little girl in one of the levels that you don't see until you turn the corner, and the dead look in her face like haunted me. For okay. some reason, for some reason, I put that game down after that scared the living shit out of me, and I never went back. And I never went back. I don't know if it was the PC or like, I don't know if there were different versions of the same game, but just the little girl in that one game scared me into oblivion. She's blonde. She should be blonde with like pigtails, I think. I don't remember this and I played that game. Is it the same one though? Because I can't remember if I played it on my computer or on my PlayStation 2. Because I didn't have a 64 growing up. I know I know that. And I didn't have a PS1. I, my first game system was a PS2. But there was a little girl blonde with pigtails, I think. And she scared the shit. She had a bow, I remember. But yeah, just because I turned the corner, I was in the zone, and then boom, I see her. And something about that just scared the fuck out of me. I, uh, so after we finish recording this, I'm going to like look up like playthroughs and I'm going to find that. <laughs> and if I find it, I'll send it to you. You can confirm or deny if that's the, if that's the, that's right. the one that so is my promise. For but... warning though, it, I'm not sure if it's a P I'm not sure if it's like a PS exclusive, like, like a PC or if it was like for PS two or maybe some other port. I don't know what, but I remember playing as either buzz or Woody and I turned the corner in like a house, I think, and this little girl just scares the absolute fuck out of me. Yeah, there you go. That, 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 that's my story. The, my, the worst jump scare I've ever had in a video game. It wasn't even a horror game. It was fucking Toy Story. I can tell you the, a moment that made me like scared when I was a kid. Shoot. Uh, but it wasn't like the scariest thing ever. I, I, uh, when I was a kid, I got I, my first console was a PS1. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I had this disc. That was uh, it wasn't a game. It was a a disc full of demos of demo games. Okay, I remember those. Yeah. So I had this like jam pack, uh, <laughs> CD of demos, and it had like de- demos for like uh, Crash Bandicoot and the original uh, Splinter Cell and uh, uh, Medieval was one of them. Like it, it had a bunch of uh, of games. And then there was like a demo for a, a little JRPG called The Legend of Dragoon. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about, like wanting like a like a remake or a sequel or something. Mm-hmm. And it was the first RPG I've ever played. And the thing about those games is that your characters can die, and you have to like bring them back to life. 
Yeah. Um, I've never seen that happen. So I had this team of like these two guys and one girl, and they kill the girl, and she just lies on the floor. And like you're and like now, like your brain now is like, oh, you know, I'll just use a potion, I'll revive her, and we'll continue the fight. But I was so shocked that she was just lying there on the floor and she was not moving and like they were jumping her turn that I was so scared that I like I turned off the PlayStation. I, I did I think I unplugged it. <laughs> and I don't think I ever played that disc again. You I was horrified. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, man. It was a traumatizing moment for you. Damn. Okay. I was a kid, yeah. And I think that's what made me like now whenever I play one of those games, now I like stuck up on potions like a crap ton. Like I <laughs> child of drama. I am the most anxious. I, I get so anxious when I start a new Pokemon game because I just I I, I just like stuck up on like potions and Pokeball. Like, like I'm always like like uh, at the 99 level. Like I I don't I don't I don't, even if I use one, I go back to the store and I buy another one because I can't I don't fuck have like here, an guys. but I don't fuck around. I need, I need my, I, I need my team to be, you know, decked out for when we get to, to the, to the last round. Like I need them. <laughs> I get that. I understand that. That makes sense. I get you. Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chema. And I'm Leon. And this is the rollback. This is the rollback. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that joke every time. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses. Yeah. Um, before we start, and before I say like the, the synopsis and, and who directed and, 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 and everything, can I just say that we're... We're on December the 2nd. We're recording this December the 2nd. The episode is coming out on Saturday. Today is Thursday. And we were so close. Every review that we've done this year has been, like, at least positive. Like, we haven't talked about a shitty movie. Like, Mul- a real shitty movie all Mulan? year. Mulan? Mulan was, was last year. That was not this year. Wonder and- Woman 1984? That was also last year. Well, fuck. We ha- okay. We haven't talked about like a shitty, shitty movie this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, what's like the worst movie? Like, like. Okay, so we both didn't like like Dune, and we didn't like. Uh, but it wasn't know, a uh, terrible I- movie. We just thought it was boring. Yeah, we didn't like Space Jam, but we understood the audience that it was going through for. Yeah. Um, we were mixed on, I was mixed on something like Nobody, we were mixed on something like Malcolm and Marie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some movies were just okay, um, like uh, Cruella or, or uh, the uh, uh, Conjuring 3. You know, we, we, we had some, uh, we were kind of divided on like something like Green Knight. But we did. We haven't had a bad, bad movie mm-hmm. like run through the rollback review all year. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's like a good thing for this year or bad for us because we have to do this. We're so close. We were so close, man. So close to a good but, to a okay. Oh, okay. Let me ask you this though. Yeah. Does it ruin it if I say that I do have some positives about the movie, but it's like 99% negative? Oh, I have some positives too. Okay. But this is yeah. mostly a bad movie. I think we'd both agree. I hate to say this, but yes. Okay. All right, well, okay. okay. Sh- should we... Wait. Here, give me the synopsis. Here, give, me, give me the actors. Yeah. Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, directed by Johannes Roberts, witnessed the origin of evil. Once the booming home of pharmaceutical giant Umbrella Corporation, Raccoon City is now a dying Midwestern town. The company's exodus left the city a wasteland with great evil brewing below the surface. When that evil is unleashed, the townspeople are forever changed, and a small group of survivors must work together to uncover the truth behind Umbrella and make it through the night. So this is Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. It is a reboot of the Resident Evil movies, which good because those movies had nothing to do with the games. This is technically a combination of Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2, taking a lot of cues from the remakes 
specifically the, the remix of those games. It stars uh, Kaya Scodelario, who was my childhood crush because I was a kid and had a, a, a face with the TV show Skins. Uh, it stars Robbie Amell, who, yes, don't, don't fucking laugh at me. Uh, we have Robbie Amell. Uh, from The Flash, we have uh, Hannah John Kamer, who was great in uh, uh, Ready Player One and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, we have uh, Evan Jogia from uh, from Victorious. And we have Tom Hooper from Nobody Knows Who That Is. So, how does the reboot of Resident Evil work as both an adaptation and as a movie? I come in knowing uh, the, two, the two first games. I know you haven't played the games, but you have like an idea of, 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 of them. I'm really interested in knowing your opinion. So you seeing it as just a movie, how do you, how, how do you take it? <laughs> oh, man, fuck. Do you want me to give you positives or negatives first? If you Are have we... less positives, we can start with the positives. <laughs> oh, I have a lot fewer positives. Okay, go ahead. Um, like all my, my biggest critiques are all going to hit from like an English major level here. Fucking okay. Um, so the positives, the effects were fine to good in some parts. The effects? Uh, I thought the effects were fine to good okay. in some parts. I, I thought the movie actually looked okay. It didn't look bad. I just l- like okay, like Leon Kennedy, for example. Like, we're not gonna get the fucking pro tag with like the super spiky hair and shit like that. Like, okay, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with this actor. I was fine with the actors that were cast, they looked fine enough. And that's the thing. My best positives are that the things that this movie did right were fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks fine. Actors were fine. That's about as much credit as I'm going to give it, though. Okay. That's the most positive that I'm going to be because, like, the fact that it looked good maybe pisses me off more because and in a lot of our top 10 worst movies, Oftentimes, my number ones and number twos weren't movies that were outright bad, but movies that I could see they should have been better, and there's no reason why they could have been. If we did a negative uh, top 10, like a 10 worst movies for this year, I have no doubt Resident Evil, this movie might be number one because I see that the tools are right fucking there. I don't understand how you don't execute it because you have a multi billion with a capital B billion dollar franchise in your hand you have stories there pre-made you have characters pre that people are already invested in i guarantee you there were people that went there that want to see leon kennedy they wanted to see uh, joe valentine they wanted to see claire redfield they wanted to see these characters go and succeed they wanted to see all these monsters you have an easy job and you still fuck it up like that's yeah. the most unforgivable sin to me is the fact that like you had you, you had uh fucking like the the world's best like chocolate cake in your hand and instead of like just giving it you like put some dirt on it rub some nuts on there fucking you you spilled some like old rubbing alcohol mashed it up threw it into the floor stomped on it a little bit brought it back put it on my plate and said here you go fuck you i don't know where i was going with that but i know i meant something <laughs> oh god um all right so I'll, I'll tell you my positives and then we can go <laughs> in negatives damn um, we, we're not in the negatives yet <laughs> yeah uh, go uh, i am um, so weirdly enough i i agree with you on the actors i don't hate these actors i think they're good choices uh kaya scolario is a great actress I, I, i've been liking her work for like a long time i really liked her in the last Pirates of the caribbean i thought she was a lot the best thing in it mm-hmm. and uh she's oh she's good as, as, as claire I, I played the game claire is a great character she looks great as claire she has the red jacket mm-hmm. um her hair is uh it's, it's not in a ponytail but that doesn't matter um and and, and i could i could very happy i would very okay see her as claire my problem is that this is not claire mm-hmm. like she looks like her but she doesn't act like claire and that's a problem and that's a problem that sadly the main four four five main characters share this because they're almost nothing like their game counterparts uh for example let's take robbie amel who plays uh who plays uh, chris redfield 
Chris Redfield is a generic buff uh, soldier guy. So mm-hmm. if you get uh, a guy like Robbie Amell who looks, who can very clearly play that part, he's probably the best casted person and the person who best represents their character because he's supposed to be kind of a blank state, boring uh, guy. Like he's not supposed to be very interesting. Mm-hmm. And he kind of represented that. So I think out of the four, he's the one that looks and acts the more like his character. Mm-hmm. Jill Valentine is a close second. Um, there is, and I, I have to call this out. There is a thing going on in Hollywood where they think, okay, how do we make a strong female character? Let's make her a badass. And like, that's a good archetype, but that doesn't make a good character. Mm-hmm. Okay. So turning both Jill Valentine and Claire Redfield into like hard ass, tough as nails, badass, kick butt soldier characters. It's not like I like it does. It, it could work. It works when they do it with Jill. It doesn't work when they do it with Claire. Because mm-hmm. Jill, you know, she had this personality. She was cool, but she was also kind of tough as nails. She was cool. She was she was she's part of the of the of, of the stars program. She's a uh, she's she's cool. Claire uh, is a, a badass. She knows her way around the gun. She she has a but she was also like super charismatic. She was a happy, like a uh, uh, very optimistic character. She was motherly. She was tender. She was warm. She the second she meets Leon, she and Leon like get a, like have amazing chemistry. They get along really well. They immediately this is the second that they meet, they're cracking jokes at each other. Mm-hmm. There's a moment where like the zombies are like right behind them, and uh, they meet halfway. And uh, Leon is inside of this fence and she's on the other side because he's inside of this police station. So they can't, they're like in front of each other and they can see, they can see and they can talk to each other, but they can't really like touch or anything because they have, they have this like fence between them and they have zombies behind both of them. And the first thing that Claire says is like, Hey, we got to stop meeting like this. <laughs> you know, like there's like a humor to her. There's no humor here. Mm-hmm. Like nothing. She's too serious. Mm-hmm. And like, I like, like I said, I like this actress. I like this character, but this is not, it, it's in the writing. It's in the directing because we're not seeing that charisma fall through. Mm-hmm. So like I said, with Jill, it kind of works because she was kind of like that already. They just amplified it. But with Claire, they just completely deleted that. Now, the one who was changed the most was Leon. Now, Evan Jogia, good actor. Yeah, what's up? I was going to say, is yeah. Leon Kennedy a bitch in the mo- in the games? Not to this extent. <laughs> okay. So the thing with Leon is that, yes, he is uh, a rookie. It's his first day. Like, it's supposed to be his first day on the job. If you play the... <laughs> ah. or- and Yeah, that, that, that kind of adds to the humor. If you play the original PS- PS1 version, like, Leon arrives late to the station because he... He broke up. He and his girlfriend break up, and he was he was drunk, and he wakes up hungover to get to the job. Uh, on the remake, he just kind of shows up late. Like they they, they don't really give, give give an explanation. But yes, it is his first day. He is a rookie, and he's supposed to like he gets to the station, and like no one is there, and uh, he just shows up, and it's just one guy who's like, "You're late," mm-hmm. and not only you're late, like we've been attacked by zombies. <laughs> So he is a rookie. He is a little bit naive, but he's not a bumbling idiot like they did with him. Now, Evan Jogia, the actor, he's a good actor. I've seen him in stuff before. I think he's good. He was this close to being the Aladdin in the Aladdin remake. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't, I think uh, the role better written would be okay in his hands. But this is just not the right thing like and then they added this like backstory of like him being like a the son of the police chief like where is that coming from it's so <clears throat> weird like it's so strange like why did they add this random nepotism story and they just made him like dumber like uh look because look you didn't need to add like a like a backstory for like chris redfield just to make him like a boring soldier character and he weirdly works fine so you can make Leon exactly how he was and it would have worked. Yeah. So sure, he's dressed like Leon. Sure, his hair is not exactly the same. And there is some Leon in him. There are some Leonisms in, in him, but not, not to this extent. Like Leon gets uh like, like like Leon like shows up some dumb side where like um 
in the game with uh not not because he doesn't he knows how to work a gun he knows how to be a cop like it's it's his first day but he's out of the academy like he's ready to go yeah and like uh he gets like played by uh by a- a- ada wong in a couple of scenes but like that's it not not in a not like this you know he's not made yeah. to look like such a little bitch yeah i'm sorry i'm this... calling for any right now but like i can't like there's no way i can go around it yeah kind of was kind of is yeah and he doesn't go to an arc like these characters don't go through any kind of arc they're just there and they, like uh yeah. they, they're all flat characters and that, the thing is so folks yeah uh, here's a lesson uh yeah. I'm, I'm gonna assume not all of our writers know i you know the flat character arc, I, I i assume Chima? yeah yeah absolutely so folks a flat character typically they don't necessarily affect they don't have an arc themselves everyone around them does if, if that makes sense like it's like goku fucking goku doesn't change goku is goku everyone around him changes like go vegeta changed because of goku piccolo changed because of goku right yeah in this film though when you have five flat characters i mean what the world changes i guess like yeah like none but none of them go through like big arcs where like they have to overcome their fears or like work together there's no clear objective like not even like what the first two thirds of the movie there's no real point it's just like they're experiencing their day they're not doing anything they have no agency everything just happens to them like oh shit, there's a zombie fire oh man oh my oh fuck, there's another like no no yeah. no the the writing is i'm sorry it's not it, there it's bad it's not there it's just not there and i, I is it just me or is that the problem with video game movies like they because a lot of video games the characters are often like don't speak or very bland because they want the player to imprint their personality onto the character that's why mario doesn't have a personality like imprint the way you are on this particular character right yeah Um, but that's because characters like that don't need it because the gameplay does the rest and with resident evil weirdly it works both ways the characters are both compelling and the gameplay is fun so all this movie needed to do was be fun have fun with this concept and have fun with these characters but they just made it so bland and then there's no there's almost no fun in 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 in, in what happens I, and i think i'm a t- sorry I, I, my last oh. point is like material like this would work so much better like as a show or something like that like either exploit this concept because weirdly some of the things that work in this movie work for like two seconds and then they leave mm-hmm. there's a beautiful shot of Leon in the police station where he's sitting at the front desk and he's kind of falling asleep listening to these headphones. And we see in the back, we see the statue and we see all of the, that's exactly how the game looks. It looks straight out of the game. It was beautiful, man. Like yeah. I, it, it, it felt like I was there. Like I felt like I, I I looked at the desk and I looked at the vault behind it and I thought, okay, that's where the phone is. That's where the big box is. That's where the, that's where the statue is. Like, that's the game. It's right there. Like you have this jar, this jar of Miyazaki, like fucking exploit it, man. <laughs> but then that's the only shot we get in the police station. And then like, there's a couple of scenes, like, like when we see them in the, in the, in, in the chief office and they're just kind of like, chilling and having fun and cracking jokes i'm like that's exactly how it looks in the game give me more of that but then they just leave they just leave the station and they go to the orphanage which is also in the game and it does kind of feel like the game too but it's not enough it's not enough if you play the resident evil 2 remake anyone will will tell you that police station is like a character it has so much personality and you get to explore every room in that station to the point where you know it by heart okay mm-hmm. and the fact that we got that one shot of the of the of the police of the of the entrance it's awesome i love it i need more of that you can't just give me one and just and just hope i'm hope i'm sufficed it's it's not okay there's a famous uh meme from rogue one where it's not anywhere near as much but when the guy says 
You were this close to greatness. We were this close to greatness, yes. Yeah, it, it feels accurate. Man, this movie feels like... You know what? I, I want to talk about the real villain of this movie for a minute. I want to talk okay. about the, 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 the main bad guy real quick because I feel like th- he did his best, but like it doesn't suffice. You know, th- this guy, he's just one... He's just a shit villain in general, but also like he's shit in general. Mr. Roberts. Let's talk about the director. Roberts? Okay. I knew you were gonna go there. Yeah, yeah. He's Joe the Hans fucking Roberts. villain in this movie. Yeah, Joanna's Roberts. Is it is it a man or a woman? I can't join us. It's a it's a man. Yeah. It's a man. All right, dude, you suck. He directed uh he directed 47 meters down, 47 meters down uncaged, and the strangers sequel, The Prey at the Night. Yeah, I saw it. You suck, dude. <laughs> no, uh, look, man, like, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this guy, he wrote and directed it. And I think yes. maybe it was a Patty Jenkins situation where they fucked up and gave him too much creative control. Because here's the thing. You, you mean talk about how, like, the, the casting was great and how it looked great, right? Those yeah. are not necessarily only the job of the director. You have cinematographers. You have you have casting directors. Uh, casting directors. You have people that work around you to help make this thing as great as it can possibly be, right? Like you hoist it. The director initially is 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 basically a manager, right? Like don't yeah. fuck it up. It's a multitasker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this manager, this guy, is the epitome of a shit manager where everyone around him does their job to such a great ability, and yet somehow he's the one that fucks it up. Because ultimately, he's the one that set the direction for the film. Yeah. And, like, the character arcs, even I, I never played a Resident Evil game, ladies and gentlemen, but I know the fucking story, at least bare bones I do. How yeah. do you fuck this up? How do you make a Resident Evil movie boring? I legit, I came this close to falling asleep three times in the first hour of this movie. I know because I timed it. I was checking <laughs> my phone. I'm like, how much more time do I have in this, dude? They're, they're 45 minutes in, and I ain't seen one zombie yet. What the fuck? Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. I appreciated the, the part, especially the part with the dog. Like, for some reason, I really like, oh, that's why the Doberman's a monster. Okay, I get it. They um, actually nailed that because that's the, that's the same breed from the game. No, yeah. And it looks, it looks straight out of the game, yeah. So, like, I, but you, you get my point, though. Like, they yeah. look legit. This movie looks good. Yeah. But looking good don't mean shit if you got nothing to back it up. And it, it this movie did not back it up at all. At yeah. all. At yeah. all. Um, like, fuck. Touchdown Cowboys. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Touchdown Cowboys. Oh, my God. I, I, I saw you looking away. I'm like, are you okay? Like, is Nikki, like, calling for you? Like, is, are your dogs destroying something? I'm like, oh, you're watching the game. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not actively watching it, but like, I just saw the screens like moving real fast. I'm like, what the fuck? You have it in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. To the 20. No, to the 10. (laughs) Ron Pollard, you beautiful bastard touchdown. (laughs) I was going to tell you we can cut this, but no, we're leaving this. Yeah, we're leaving this. (laughs) Yeah. Jesus, that's where your mind is. Okay. Uh, Um, No, you know what? This reminds me of the movie. I didn't give a fuck about this movie. I'm more interested in this thing. Oh, my God. I'm I'm kidding. No, no, it's no, it, 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 it makes sense. Um, did you have trouble focusing during the movie? I did not. I I did want it to know. I I get so I am such a nerd that I get so excited when like when like I I have like ingested the the previous the source material and then I go to see that I, I am I love that so <laughs> much and and look when I was in college I did I I, I participated in lots of research projects mm-hmm. so like I did a lot of like uh of like uh. Uh, like compare and contrast. I, I I did a lot of peer reviews, so like I am such a nerd for like for, for, for like I saw this in the game. I hope it's in the movie. Like uh, yeah, like, yeah. Like when the movie starts and we see that scene of like the truck driver with Claire in the in in, in there, and he the first shot we see is like him picking up the burger and eating it. That is the first shot of the game. Like that is how Resident Evil Two starts. Mm-hmm. So the fact that that is how it's done, I got excited. I, yeah. I was like, yo, like, like the fact that they got like a, such a small detail and they decided to start with that. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, great, great right foot forward. 
because when because the games the rest just when this is finished look up resident evil 2 like beginning scene and it's literally like a burger being picked up by a truck driver and it is the most amazing burger you've seen in a video game like believe me you're gonna see this shit and you're gonna be like that is the most beautiful burger i've ever seen in a video game yeah. and uh like it weirdly looks better than the one in the movie Mm-hmm. Um, but Claire is not like with him at the start of the game. It's just like the, the it starts with just him driving. Um, there are some changes, and there are some things that I there are some things that, that like there's a couple of like little details and shout outs that were made for fans. So like I don't I don't deny that the people who worked on this were fans. Mm-hmm. I don't deny that. There's one uh the, there's one scene where, where like the 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 stars team are eating at this diner. And they're playing that game where, where they put a ketchup bottle on, on, on Leon's head and Claire kind of like, you know, does the thing where, where like they give her a gun and she like shoots it and like, and like dumps the, the bottle. Yeah. And she takes Wesker's sandwich and she takes a bite and she goes, it's Jill's sandwiches now. I'm like, that's, that's, that was fucking cool. That was cute <laughs> as shit. Like that is such <laughs> a niche little thing in the resident. Deal. Like that is such like you have to know Resident Evil to know that I think. Mm-hmm. Like why? Like why would you include something so trivial and so stupid? It's kind of like did, did you see the Sonic movie? Uh, I never did. I'll be honest, I never did. Okay, have you seen that drawing of Sonic where like it's him like like circular like it's, it's kind of like an ugly drawing? Have you ever seen that? I think I've seen the meme actually. Okay, so there's a scene in the movie where like this guy is like describing Sonic as like I, I, like I've seen him like no one believes him and he pulls up that drawing. Like in the movie, like mm-hmm. that is like the equivalent of that, uh, of, of like the fact that she said like it's Jill Sandwich now. Like that's fucking yeah. cute. That was cute as shit. <laughs> I support that. I want more of that. Um, were there a lot of those details? Because again, I'm not a fan of the sound- source material, so I can't say this. Were there a lot of references to like the source material to where like a hardcore fan would have been like? I think that was the biggest one. Because mm-hmm. like, do you know what that where, where that's from or not? No, nah, dude, I. Okay, so okay, so the original Resident Evil, the one for PS One, uh, because they remade it afterwards, and like the remake is like the best, the best way to play it. But the original version for for PS One is like is it's really good, but it's notorious for having terrible, terrible voice acting. Okay, um, and there's one scene where like Barry, who's this character that for some reason was not part in was was not in the movie, uh, he saves Jill from this room because like she picks up this item in the room. And the, the ceiling for the room just starts like go, coming down mm-hmm. and she's about to be crushed. And he pulls her out and he goes, that was really close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. And it's a terrible line. Like it's a horrible line. But the way that he said it, it was so funny that like it became like instant <laughs> meme material to the mm-hmm. point where like the Resident Evil games have addressed this. Like, there's a moment in Resident Evil Revelations where like Claire and Jill are running and uh, there's like a similar room, but it's like backwards, like the, like the floor is going up mm-hmm. and they get saved. And Jill is like, Claire, are you OK? And, and, and Claire is like, yeah, I was almost a Claire sandwich. And, and, and Jill goes, <laughs> does Barry tell everyone that story? God damn. <laughs> so, like, so like Jill sandwich is like an inside joke. Like everyone who's better into will knows it. So mm-hmm. the fact that the movie went like it's Jill sandwiches now, like that's fucking cute. I like that. I support that. More of that, please. But the movie, like like I said, those little scenes like kind of work. There's a scene where Leon and Claire get to the orphanage and a and a liquor shows up. A liquor is like that, 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 that zombie that like shows up at the ceiling. And, oh, like, with has, the tongue, has, like, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and it looks straight out of the game. Like it yeah. looks exactly like they like it did in the game. It's, it's awesome. But there's only one. And they don't explain him. Like he's just there. They didn't they never go like, oh, that's a liquor. It happened when this is like nothing. He's just like, I look up. Oh, that's that's a thing. And it's that now. Moving on. Like that. It's a liquor. Like, do something with it. Do you think? Okay. The games I assume don't drag on in the beginning as much as this movie did. Because this movie, again, no. I want to stress this. Like the first, like what, 40, 45 minutes drag to me yeah. at least do they drag to you it takes too it it takes too much time telling us like hey umbrella is evil umbrella is evil like we fucking know umbrella is evil and then we've seen the other the, 18 movies guys 
No, and even if you haven't seen the other movies, if you play the game, the game doesn't stress out that Umbrella is evil until like later in the game. And they don't push it too hard. Like we know that, it's, that, that they're evil, but they're not, they, they don't spend this much time like letting us know like, oh, they're evil and they've done this and they've killed and they've, they've, they've taken everyone out, out, out of town and they're destroying everything. And like G-Virus, T-Virus, like all of this shit, like we don't need this. Because also, like, I'm mostly stressing on the Resident Evil 2 parts of the game. Resident Evil 2, the, the Spencer Mansion is, like, shoved into this movie. And they do so little with it, too. And, like, it looks kind of like the mansion in the game, but smaller. It feels really small. The first Resident Evil movie, the, first, the very first one. Yeah. What happens in it? Like, can you, can you give me, like, a super quick, like... Through, like super short version of it. What, what happens in the first one? So basically everything with Jill, Chris, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wesker, and the mansion, mm-hmm. that's the first game. So everything Kennedy with, isn't even until the second game? Yeah. So Lee, a, a, everything with Leon, Claire, the police station, and the orphanage, mm-hmm. that's, that's Resident Evil 2. And basically the ending of this movie is like the ending of Resident Evil 2. Like them in the underground... Uh, fighting against the big monster. Mm. Uh, that's Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Okay. I have an idea. Okay. What if instead of like fucking around, they made this movie instead of an. This movie is barely 100 minutes long, including credits. Yeah. Also, it's very short. Like, if you're going to mash two games. Like, but fucking. So, what if they yeah. had made it like uh, instead of it being only like 100 minutes long, make it two and a half hours? Within the first yeah. 20 minutes, like establish your characters during the first 20 minutes, all of them. And then for the next two hours, go to town. Like half, half the movie, we're at the fucking mansion. The other half of the movie, we're at the police station. Everything's going to shit. We're following two separate stories. Then the third act, they meet. And then boom, we, we finish with like them walking out or whatever. Like with that, does that sound yeah. like a better like overall plot line? Like overall like... They could have just made two movies or like two seasons of a show. Well, no, the thing is though, is I think they know Kennedy is the money shot. Like he's the character. He's the one yeah. everyone knows with Resident Evil. So they had to include him in the game. I mean in the movies. Include him by himself if you want to do like a Resident Evil 4 mm-hmm. movie or a Resident Evil 4 show. Because yeah, he is the main character in that one. If you play Resident Evil 2, Claire and Leon share the same screen time. They're equally as important. And anyone who's played Resident Evil 2 will tell you that while we like Leon, Claire is like the best character. But uh, like, is it, isn't yeah. Leon the most like bankable character though? Because I always hear people referencing him, but I've never. It's mostly referenced... because it, it's mostly because he's the main character in four, and Resident Evil Four is like the most popular Resident Evil game. Mm-hmm. And in that one, he's a badass. Like he's not like a youngin, like a rookie. In that one, he's been in the job for a while. So is that the one with the president's why. daughter? Yeah, it's the one, yeah. Okay, okay, I know what you're trying to talk about. Right? Yeah. I vaguely know what you're trying to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, including him in this one and inc- and having this be the Leon Kennedy of Resident Evil 2, that's okay. I'm into it. I like Resident Evil 2 Leon. Uh, <laughs> I like how I like his energy and I like how he wants to do good on you can see that like everyone refers to him as a rookie, like uh because he's he's a kid. It's his mm. first day. And uh, and that's why he gets along with Claire because Claire's also like a young character. Like I think she's in her early 20s and she's just coming into town because she's, she is looking for her brother. So, which is, lo- he's lost because of the events of Resident Evil 1. Mm. And uh, there's, just play the games. <laughs> like just, just, just play the game. Honestly, like if you have Res- the Resident Evil 2 remake, just play the Resident Evil 2 remake. Like it is, <laughs> miles beyond better than this and it is so much it is a much better game and a much better movie than this turned out to be mm-hmm. what a waste what a waste of like good attempts at uh at cinematography because there are some shots and there are some some takes that feel straight out of the game mm-hmm. are, this movie needed to be more atmospheric Mm-hmm. It needed to be more focused and it needed to have an actual arc with the characters because you can't just copy and paste the things that work in the game and not co- and not include the heart of what makes it work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because there are some scenes. There's a scene in the Spencer mansion where Chris is fighting a bunch of zombies. And there's a scene where like he almost gets like he, there's so many on top of him. 
And there's mm-hmm. a crazy scene where like the only light that he has is the slider that he just keeps yes. turning on and on. And that's a great scene. Okay. There are almost no scenes like that in the game, but it feels at home here. It's yeah. what, if you translated the game into a movie, those are the scenes that needed to be there to make it work. Okay. Yeah. So, makes sense. Yeah. More scenes like that and less scenes of, there's a, uh, there's a horrible scene where, uh, uh, Chris and Leon are, are in the uh, in the weaponry, and he doesn't even know how to load a shotgun, and and she just takes it and like loads it herself and stuff. And and he, and he asks her like, "You're probably wondering what's a guy like me would uh, like do, do, doing as a cop?" And she's like, "Yeah," and he goes, "Yeah, me too." Yeah. Like, what was that? Like, like the Leon in the game, like he's a rookie, he's not an expert, but he's not. But he has heart, you know. He wants to be there. Like you, you can tell he wants to do good. Do you think they they made a mistake in thinking Leon was more of a slacker? He was more of a, like a cloud kind of guy versus like a the thing dude. Is that he's nothing like that. No, yeah. but like, like, do you think they they misinterpreted like what the character it really is in the game? Like in that fashion? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they were. What was their plan with this? Because if you were gonna make him a slacker, then make him a badass by the end. Like you would have done more than just give him a rocket launcher. Like, that's not enough of an arc. Also, quick question. That big monster at the very end that the Doctor turns yeah. into, is that in the games? Yes. Because he looks intimidating. I'll give him that. He looks intimidating as fuck. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that was straight from the games, yeah. Where's, that looked pretty good. Yeah. Where's Nemesis and Mr. X from? <sighs> oh, okay. Here it comes. Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. He didn't need to be here. Mr. X! How do you adapt Resident Evil 2 and not include Mr. X? Like, that pissed me off. Wait, he's like, not, he's from Resident Evil 2? He should have been in this game? He's in not movie? in the movie. He's not in the movie. No, and but like, he should have been. He should have been because, okay, so he is one of the most intimidating presences that I've felt in a game, mm-hmm. okay? Because, because the Resident Evil, both the first and the second one, they're puzzle games. They look like action, adventure, uh, zombie games. They're not. They're puzzle games. At their core, they're puzzle games. And the second one being my favorite one, you're in this police station and you have to go through all these rooms and find clues and find like what you need to move or what you need to touch or like or like what the, what is the next step to keep moving. And right when the game feels like, okay, I'm starting to get this. I'm starting to get the controls. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get like where to go and how to move. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm in the zone. This game's going to be a piece of cake. That is when you introduce Mr. X because Mr. X is constantly at the police station and he's walking from room to room and you have no way of stopping him. Like you cannot defeat him. You can knock him out for like a few seconds so you can escape, but he's always there. So you can be in a room and you can come out of the and, and wh- while you're in a room like solving a puzzle, you can hear him walking outside, mm-hmm. and he can walk into the room. He will he will go into every room except for save rooms, but he'll go into every room, and that is terrifying because now you've added this like extra layer of like scary because like now it's not just I I can't just take my time with these puzzles. I have to do them and I have to do them fast because he's coming. And there's going to be times where, like, you're going to be so confused and you're like, how do I fucking solve this puzzle? And then you just hear in the background. And it is terrifying. (laughs) And it is awesome. Mr. X is awesome. People who play this in PC, they added this mod that, like, instead of him walking around and, like, hearing the steps, you hear, X gonna give it to you. He gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you. And it's awesome. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I-, I was watching the movie the whole time. I'm like, where the fuck is Mr. X? Where is Ada Wong? Why doesn't Westward have his savvy sunglasses? There are some things that just should be there. And it's so weird that they're not. Because, what? Because look, they included the liquor. Mm-hmm. The thing that shows up on the on, on the ceiling, they included that. And it's like, okay, it's cool. It looks exactly like the game, but like, like I said, it's just one. They don't even explain him and dies very easily. So what a waste. So, man, I That's feel like now sense. I need to play the games now. You should play the games. Oh, God. You, 
You know, you know what? what? You can skip. You know what? Skip the first one. Just play the second one. Okay. You Just know what? Trust me I, this. I'm off the next few days. I'll I'll, I'll try. Let, let's find out. I'll, our next bit could be the fact that I played the game. Okay. And we'll find out. All right. Um, because that because that's also the cool thing. Like when Resident Evil Two starts, you you have it right. Yeah, N- yeah. N- Nikki actually finished it. Okay, so when you start Resident Evil Two, the game will ask you, "Do you want to play as Leon or do you want to play as Claire?" Mm-hmm. And then you'll choose one. And then when the game ends, the, the game will be like, "Do you want to restart the game as the other character, or do you want to play the other scenario as the other character?" Mm-hmm. So, for example, let's. So, for example, I played Leon first, and mm-hmm. then I finished it. And then the game asked me, do you want to play the other scenario? And I was like, cool. So now the game restarts. And now everything that happens, I see what Claire was doing. Mm-hmm. And I play her side of the story. Mm-hmm. While what how was happening with Leon was happening at the same time. So mm-hmm. you kind of play the game twice, but it has enough differences to be like its own thing. So yeah. like at the mansion, that was mostly Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield, right? Chris Redfield. And that was Resident Evil 1, yes. And then the second part is at the police station, but with uh, Leon and Claire. Leon and Claire. Okay, so these are four main characters. Does the little girl is she significant in the games at all? She's in the second one, and yeah, it ends exactly like like the game does. Like like it, it ends with Leon and Claire like with the city like blown up and like with the two of them like walking with her. Yeah, there's even like a joke like the the little girl says like uh because like she's walking with both of them and she goes like. Are you two like boyfriend and girlfriend? And and, and Claire goes like, no, we just met. <laughs> and <laughs> and then and then I think the thing Leon goes like, well, it would have been a hell of a first date. And then like they're walking, and then the little girl goes like, you two can adopt me. Like this is dope. Like, yeah. <laughs> so like like I said, they have a chemistry, and it's cool, and it's funny, and like that's missing in this game. Like this is a game about zombies and shooting and puzzles and Mister X and like all these things. And weirdly enough. The thing I really like about the games is the chemistry between Leon and Claire. Like, it just really fucking works. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And uh, I don't know. Like, it, like I said, it really works for me. And I, I wish, I wish this movie just had a little bit more of that. Mm-hmm. That's that's because that's all it needed to be, really. I, man, I cannot imagine what it would be like to be such a huge fan. Because the thing is, man, they have, while well, they have made movies of this, yeah, and haven't really made a really great live action, and they've had opportunities. Like, yeah. I don't this movie. Uh, so this movie underperformed at the box office. I I think. Yeah. Budget of twenty five mil, which is not bad for a rated R movie, only got back fifteen million. Yeah. So I don't know what their plan is. I don't know why the fuck they wouldn't just sell the rights to Netflix. Netflix is starving for content. Like, just give no, them they're the not. <laughs> yes, they are. Dude, they drop a new like season of some show every week. Yeah. Like fucking give them Resident Evil and then let them go to town. Let them go to work. Weirdly, because this is made by Sony mm-hmm. and Sony has a Sony does not have a streaming platform. So they, they, they work through Netflix. They, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't licensed this out or something. And man, I oh, fuck man. This movie had all the makings, it had the raw material to be a great movie, yeah. but it failed miserably. Like, how how do you almost knock me out? Like 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 Dune. Yeah. But this is a very different beast than Dune. Yeah. I, I just I don't know, man. I don't see a sequel being made for this film. Me neither. Which sucks because I did saw the the, the actor who plays uh Chris uh, Robbie ML. He said that if we make a sequel, we're gonna include the scene where where Chris punch punches a rock, and it's like, fuck yes, that I want that so bad. Like I want to see that so bad. It's so stupid, and I want it. And then like the movie, and did you stay for the after credit scene? Oh, Ada Wong, yeah, yeah. So like Ada Wong is there, and she gives uh, like uh, the guy his sunglasses, and like, oh my god, like that's that's what this was. This was an origin story of why Wesker wears sunglasses, like. Wesker is such a cartoonish villain mm-hmm. that like he wears sunglasses inside like that's the fucking joke and they, they make like a backstory for the what like oh god so okay so I have a question yeah um in, in the so why don't why don't people ever mention Resident Evil 3 why don't people mention it because I hear mentions of how one like changed the horror genre how yeah. two is legit one of the best games ever made 
Nothing about three. Four is incredible. Yeah. And, I, and, and I don't know what, what happened to six. I think six is the one where they go to South Africa and they got like a super controversial or five. And then there was Resident Evil 7 where yeah, there's seven. Like the creepy family and then eight with the tall lady. That's you, you, you pretty much summed up all of Resident Evil except for Revelations. Yeah. Which one's Revelations? Uh, it's like spinoffs, like oh, okay. li- li- little, li- little like side stories. Um, why don't people talk about three? Because it's not one and two. It's just and not, it's not fair. And no, it's it's good. It's just more of one and two. Because dude, it, Claire and Jill come back. For, no, uh, Chris and Jill come back for three. Like th- like they're 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 there again. And uh, in the last, because uh, like six, uh, Biohazard. Mm-hmm. No, seven Biohazard. So seven Biohazard is like kind of a soft, not a soft reboot. But it's like completely new story. Like it's a new main character and everything. But then the hill, Chris, the yeah. And, but then uh, in the new one in eight uh, in Village, like Chris Redfield shows up. So like he's there. Isn't he? Doesn't yeah. he just show up at the very beginning? Uh, I haven't played it. I just saw him in the trailer. I I, I haven't played a uh, Village yet. So yeah. Manic actually played some of Village. Actually, it's kind of scary. Yeah, I haven't played it. Uh, I'm I, I'm kind of not a fan of the uh, uh, first person. I prefer the third person. So, I actually prefer first person. I'm a fan of the okay. tall lady. I mean, who isn't? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, let me let me let, 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 let me leave something. Let me leave our listeners with something. I have been a fan of tall women for like a long ass time, and everyone's always told me that I'm fucking weird for that. And yet, for some fucking reason, Resident Evil Eight Village comes out, and now everyone likes tall women. Like. <laughs> I mean, welcome. Sit down. It's a small club, but like, welcome. But suddenly, everyone likes it. Like, I don't want to gatekeep. I don't want to gatekeep tall women. But, but, I mean, shit. If we're, if we're putting, if we're putting it on the table here. I actually always knew I had a height requirement for any girl I would ever date because it's because I didn't want to hurt my back by bending over okay. all the time, like to to like dance or whatever. So I'm so, I'm so gl- perfect. I'm so glad you said dance. I am so happy you said dance. We were like this close to like losing everything. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Back to the movie. Um, back to the shitty movie. That. So I have. I have. Yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Okay. When you saw it, when did you see it? Like what time of the day? What day did you see it? I saw it on Monday, and I saw it like at seven, like almost eight. Like I oh. saw it like kind of at night. Mm-hmm. Like I. I, I had been to the theater a couple of times after getting like my, my vaccine, but I hadn't gone by myself. Mm. So I kind of went, I was like, uh, I, I was in one of those moods where I, where I was just like, you know, I kind of want to like get away for a bit. Like I want to go. And, and I said, I'm going to go to the movies and I'm going to watch the first movie that is like playing next. And I, I knew that I had like choices because it's this one and Canto had just came out house of Gucci, some theaters, uh, I haven't seen the new Ghostbusters, so I was like, I'll watch, you know, whatever. It's there. And I got uh, Resident Evil, and I also got my Spider-Man tickets while I was there. So, you know, mm-hmm. two for one. But yeah, I saw it on Monday. Like, I just saw it. You? You saw, you saw it, like, yesterday, right? No, I, so I saw it on Tuesday. Yeah. I went to the showing that started at 10 o'clock. You went by yourself, or you took Nikki? Oh, by myself. No. She, okay. So, oh, wait, that should be an omen for this. I asked Nikki, yes. hey, do you want to go watch this movie with me? Like, we can go together, whatever. She said, I, she said, that movie will suck. No. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, like, no opening, no, like, oh, you know, no, no, no. She called it, and she called it right, though. She was right, to be fair. Oh, she was right, yeah. But, like, she said, that movie's going to suck. No, I'm not going to go watch it. <laughs> I just straight up refused. Yes. Like, 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 not even to like compare with the games because, like, she's played them, right? Yeah, yeah, no, like, she's not even to compare, actually. yeah, uh, but like, not even to compare, like, oh, let's no. see how they do it. Like, not no. even, no, she wow. was like, that movie's gonna suck. I'm not going, I'm like, okay, fair, wow. fair, fair. I love you too, boo, love you, yeah. but she was right. <laughs> wow, she was right. I'm shocked. Um. Jesus, man! Like this, this movie was—it wasn't good. It wasn't no. good at all. Um, you, you, you want to hear the worst part? What? This is not the movie that I hated the most this year. Like weirdly enough, mm-hmm. 
weirdly enough, I could see myself watching this again. Like, I feel like maybe if I was drunk or like if a friend hadn't seen it and they were curious to see it Mm -hmm. or just to make fun of it, because it's not a so bad, it's good movie. It's not. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's not going to be forgotten because there were movies that I... Not gonna lie, there were some scenes that I would want to rewatch, and mm-hmm. it was kind of cool to see them. It's not the best version of Resident Evil, but and I hate to say this, it is the most faithful to the source material. Mm-hmm. So I don't think this is the ultimate Resident Evil movie, but I don't think it's gonna be the last time that we see a Resident Evil movie being made based on the first and second games. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe someone needed to fail at doing it more faithful. Mm-hmm. So that eventually we can have a movie that is both good and faithful. I don't know, man. I think the executives are going to look at the the piss poor box office is going to be like, well, we tried doing it faithfully and it sucked. A uh, different version now. Like, I don't know, man. I, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be against Alice making a return. I am. Uh, you I are? never got Alice. I didn't. I, I never cared for Alice. Hey man, look, she was the only she was the most uh consistent of them all. You gotta admit that. I mean she at least, at least Mila Jovovich showed up for all like eight of them. Yeah, because her husband was directing. Like she kind of really? had to. Really? Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, that's Paul D- Paul D- W. S. Anderson. Like he's a director and like Really? I don't yeah. He huh. also directed Monster Hunter. That's that's why he also put her in the in the starring role. I feel like there's nepotism in that then. You don't say. <laughs> hey, man, they have no a big fat paycheck. Her daughter was yeah. in Black Widow, so man, congratulations. Also, folks, this movie was so bad to talk about it, I've been drinking. I'm just saying. Jesus. Ah, uh, final thoughts? Final thoughts. Oh, God. There are good things in this, but not enough good things to save it. It... It fails at being an entertaining product. It succeeds kind of in being faithful to the source material. I wish it took it more respectfully and developed it more. I have a theory that I think maybe Sony was going to lose the movie rights and they were like, we need to, we need to release something so we, so we can like re uh, we, so we can keep it or something because it's not the actor's fault. Mm-hmm. It's not like uh, set designers, uh, effects people. Like you can tell that some people do care about this, okay? Mm-hmm. And the fact that there were some callbacks and some references, uh, there is heart in it. It's mm-hmm. just not executed or directed properly, and that's that's its problem. Mm-hmm. So is it good? It's not great. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know me, I'm, I'm I'm the optimist of the group. I am I'm the one willing to see like the, the better things in, in even the bad movies. So I do see myself seeing it again at some time. Maybe, maybe just like in a year or something. Like maybe I was too harsh. Let me, let me try it again, and I'll I will see it then. Mm-hmm. I feel like if this if this had been a Netflix original, I wouldn't be too upset. But the fact that they pushed it like only in theaters, only in theaters, only in theaters, like that bothered me a bit. Like I, this is not movie theater worthy. If you, you can, know, if you can stream it, stream it, but don't pay for it. I think you're right, honestly. I think uh, I think we'd be kinder if it had to come out on Netflix. Yeah, I think I think you're right there, but I think the criticism still stands. Like the writing yeah. was shit. I, I'm sorry, I didn't even get your grade, mate. What was your grade? Oh, uh, Jesus, two out of ten. Damn! Wow. Okay, that is negative. If I've ever heard you give a negative score, yeah, it's not good. But fair. But it's not zero. That's not zero. Not You're not zero. wrong. A full star is just for having Claire in the red jacket. Like that's that at least was accurate. <laughs> fair. Yeah. yeah. Um. You? Fuck, man. Like I can't forgive the writing. The writing was so bone dry. The dr- the writing was drier than the goddamn Sahara Desert. Okay. <laughs> The writing was dry. The dialogue was stiff. They didn't execute the characters properly. And again, I want to be clear. It's not the actor's fault. Like the, the acting was so off or like the direction was so off in this movie. Even I was like, I feel like this was done by like a high school kid with a budget. 
or like a call a really edgy college student with a budget. Listen, if this would have been a fan film, mm. I would have given them like all the props in the world. <laughs> no, but you I'm know? saying no, but I'm saying though, like it feels like it was shot by someone that did that, like is fresh out of college that needs to yeah. like learn the tricks of the trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like man I, I don't like this movie and it's not I, I know it's the director's fault like this is one of those rare times i can be like nah mate you fucked up like it wasn't the actors you fucked up hell yeah oh man f plus wow f plus though not the f. f no no you know why the f is for failing to execute so much but the plus is man it looked great like imagine if this was if it looked the same but it was better writing and better storytelling. Yeah. Imagine. Absolutely. But no, no, we, we in this life cannot have nice things. We cannot have everything. Yeah. No. I will tell you this. I am more likely to watch this again than to rewatch the other nine. D- okay. They could not have been that bad. You know what? I'll they fucking, were that bad. I'm going to go back and I'm going to rewatch the first one and I'll get back to you. They were not good. The director just wanted to make another ultraviolet, so he just made another ultraviolet with like his wife and with uh, the Resident Evil name. Like it's not good, man. And uh, I'm just I'm not a fan, not a fan. But I am a fan of the game, so I want to recommend everyone to please play the Resident Evil and Resident Evil Two remakes because they are fucking fantastic. Okay. And please do not give your hard-earned mind to this piece of shit film. Just wait for it to be on streaming. It's going to be on Netflix. Like eventually Sony has to deal with them. Like it's going to just wait like 45 days. It's going to be there and then watch it and then form your own opinion because that is the right thing to do. You know, Netflix is actually swimming in money. What if yeah. they offer to buy the rights to the Resident Evil, like Resident Evil 2, but they do the part two good. I would be, I would be on board because I like this cast. And by the way, I want to give like one last message. I don't want anyone bullying the cast. With that, first of all, without having even seen the fucking movie, okay? Wait, who the fuck's trying to bully the cast? A lot of people. So, if everyone, if anyone comes at them like fuck, fuck you, okay? You know what? Fuck you. Like, 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 if you haven't seen the movie and you're like, oh, Leon is not black, shut the fuck up, okay? Leon does not exist. He can look however the fuck the movie wants it to look, okay? So if you're going to judge the movie, if you're going to judge Leon on the portrayal, on the writing, on the fact that they made him an idiot, good. But if you're going to judge Leon for being played by a piece of, by, by, by a character, by an actor who's a, who's a person of color, fuck you. Same thing goes with Jill. I had to say it because I've been seeing so many fucking idiots on the internet. So yeah, Jill, fuck you and you're a racist. Wait, Jill was played... Jill... Really? Like, okay, yeah. I knew I, I knew the Leon thing. I just just because I knew I thought he was white with blonde, but I mean I didn't give a shit. Like yeah, I'm for the character. But like yeah. so people have just been giving them hate just because they're not the right race. That's, that's yeah. Why like who who gives enough of a shit about this? You would be surprised. Folks, these are fake characters, like judged by the performance. Character. Yeah, these are these are fictional characters, yeah. judged by the goddamn performance. You know what? Don't even judge by the performance. Judge the writing, because this is shitty writing. That's fair, actually. The writing is shit. Yeah, no, don't judge the don't judge the actors. Judge the goddamn yeah. writing, the piece of shit director. If anything, we all need to like voice our hatred at Mr. Roberts. Yeah, fuck you, Roberts. <laughs> Kaya Scodelario, I am free all week, and uh, yeah. Oh no, wait, no, she's married and pregnant right now. Jesus. Um, I mean, I? shoot your shot. Uh, nah. <laughs> no, not with married people. I can't do that. That's that's not okay. Um, but you could give her the reason. Oh my god! Be the push that she needs. This was a rollback. Thank you for watching. My name was Gemma. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on movies, you can like and subscribe to our podcast. We have a YouTube channel where I do video reviews every once in a while. I'm getting new yeah. equipment. Hopefully on Sunday. So. Thanks for joining us. We're available on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, and you can check out our reviews. We do reviews two times, sometimes two times a week, definitely at least once a week. We talk about new movies. We talk about old movies, and sometimes we do stupid little skits like this. So 
Uh, next week, what are we doing next week? Ghostbusters? All right. Ghostbusters so we're doing Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Looks like we're doing Ghostbusters Afterlife. And then next, next week, we have a Spider-Man No Way Home. So be on the lookout for that review. Oof. Um, Yes, oof, indeed. I, I think I, I'm honestly considering recording the the vocal reactions, like on my voice memo on my phone, to the reactions like once I believe the other Spider Men appear. I believe gonna, I believe they're in the film. I believe they're in the film, so okay, I want to record those because reactions. because I don't. You really think that the, you really think that they're not in the film? You know, okay. <laughs> you can include this, by the way, on the show. Uh, <laughs> We we hung out a couple of weeks ago, and you told me this belief system that you have, where you always think the Cowboys are gonna lose, so that way, if they win, your expectations are 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 met, are not only met but they're exceeded, right? Yeah. I don't believe that the that the other two Spider Men are gonna be there, so that way, if they're not there, I won't be disappointed. But I also think that people are getting too excited about something that has never even been confirmed. They've never said they're going to be there. They've vocally said they're not going to be there. And I don't want to say that they're obviously telling the truth because I don't know. But I'm also not going to get like, but they but they told me they never told me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to be the idiot that falls in love with a stripper. Okay. But I thought so, she liked me from um well, I thought she liked me. You mean she's nice to everybody? She's nice to it. she's just doing her job, man. Jeez. Um yeah. so no, I'm not gonna do that. And I'm also not gonna get upset if the other two Spider-Man are not there. I just need the product that they give me to be a good product, and I'm only gonna judge it there, not on what it could have been, which is really idiotic thing to say because I just judged this movie for what it could have been. So if anything we've learned is that we, as, mo as all liberals are, are a bunch of hypocrites. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back next week. Good night, everyone. Wait, wait, real quick, real quick. I want to talk about betting odds real quick. I want to talk about okay. money. Okay. So, you know, get this. In Vegas, the odds are three to one that they're in it, one to two that they're not. And I want to put money down that they're in it. I think that'd be the easiest fucking money. Folks, if you have a gambling addiction, this is one of those times where you use it. What if you just save and you just, you know, you go on a nice vacation with your wife somewhere, you know? Like, hey, but if I bet the money and I'm right, we can go on an even nicer vacation. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can trust me with my kids' college fund. Bye, everybody. I just I just want like Nick, like Nikki to listen to this episode and be like, you know what? Chema's fucking right. Like <laughs>